The House of Mystery presents Inside Writing, the radio show where authors discuss their writing process in all genres. All right, you've chosen to come back into the House of Mystery, and I'm not sure why. God knows why. God yep. knows why. And now joining us, like we said before the break, is the one and only Diane Fanning. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. I'm glad to be with you today. Now, we're going to be talking about a book called Baby Be Mine that you wrote, and it's the shocking true story of a woman who murdered a pregnant mother to steal her child. Wow. Um... You know, I came across this because we actually interviewed uh, Harry McLean um, about the uh, McElroy, wasn't that his name? That was shot. Yes, yes. And, and so, and I watched that uh, documentary that's out, and all of a sudden on the third episode, you came on. <laughs> it's like, yes, it's, just a, it's like magic. Yeah, it's like, why is Diane there? Like, what, what's, what's she doing? Did she shoot him? No, and then. Um, and then you start talking about this. This is a horrific, horrific case. Um, yes. And, you know. Really, it, it, unbelievable is and, what it is. And this town only has 400 people living in it. How can they have so much crime in such a small well, town? It, it's just amazing. It's almost like the town was cursed because of McElroy. It. It, there's hardly, you know, as you said, it's only a couple hundred people there. And um, they had this crime with uh, Bobby Joe Stinnett, who was murdered to steal the baby out of her body. Oh. And then you had one of her cousins was um, murdered in a, a domestic violence incident where he left left her dead body out in the backyard and called police. And then you have um, this young man that went missing and no one knows what happened to him. And there's there have been a lot of theories about what happened to him. I, I tend to line up with the one that um, this one guy who had written about what it sounded like to a friend online about a crime that very well could have been Branson Perry's murder. And there, there's, there was a state trooper that was on the case that I talked to who is convinced that's what, what it is, and he very well might be right. Um, but that guy's serving time for child pornography stuff, so yeah. who knows if he'll ever be prosecuted for that. Wow. But that's crazy to have so much crime in such a short time in such a small, populated town. Um, yeah, it was, those three all died in five-year period. And, wow. And, and they're horrific, too. They're not just like, you know, uh, 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 some sort of spousal abuse that went out of hand or something, some, some weird sort of thing. This is, uh, um, now, what... When you got to the town, you you weren't coming for this case originally, were you? Or were you were you there for McElroy? No, I was there for Bobby J. Stinnett. Oh, okay. yeah, How yeah. So I, I, it was a strange place. You know, it's like yeah. all around at the countryside. It's just lovely, very pastoral, like rolling hills and cows, and you know, it just it just is pleasant and peaceful. But the town itself has, they felt very injured by the media and the public in general because of the McElroy story. And they have really pulled into themselves. I, I have, I've been to, I went to other towns around there thinking maybe this is just the way it is in, in northwest Missouri. But no, every other place, every other little tiny town I stopped in, people were warm and friendly, like, like I've heard about the Midwest. So it was a, really a shock when, you know, I entered the town. I walked into a restaurant bar to grab some lunch, and I was, I was told they don't serve people like me. <laughs> You know, I'm going, okay. <laughs> like, 
Like like, I'm, like I'm, me. I'm, I'm people people with two like, legs. Or? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so and then um, when I went to go into the convenience store. This big man blocked my way in the door. I was going to go get a pack of crackers and something to drink, you know, so I could have something to eat. No, uh, no, you can't do business here. But, you know, it was just so strange. It, I've never encountered anything quite like that. I've had some weird responses on a couple of my other books, but it, it wasn't quite like this. So, yeah. Do you think that... Do you think the town is embarrassed about the attention that they've gotten, maybe? I think they're embarrassed by it, and I think they're angry by it. They think, well, there there were a lot of, particularly like in, in, in um, the papers in the Northeast, the McElroy stuff made a lot of the people down there, like backwood, ignorant, uh, yeah. lynchers, you know. And, you know, honestly... When you look at the story of McElroy and how he kept getting away with one crime after another crime after another, and his lawyer was just so crafty and got him off all the time, and once again, he was slipping through the, the, the fingers of justice, and they just they couldn't take it anymore. He was shooting at people now. He'd gone that far. I mm. mean, see... Stealing their cows was one thing, but then they started shooting people and old people at that. So he was uh, he was just terrorizing the town, and I can't say that I blame them for wanting to get rid of him like that when it seemed like the law wasn't helping at all. Yeah. Now the the thing that they were also criticized for was not getting. There were a lot of witnesses. And no one gave up the shooters. And, um, and shoot, I can understand that. You know, they were really feeling like us against the world. Nobody's helping us. We've got to deal with ourselves. It wasn't the right thing to do. It was an act of total desperation. But I can't condemn them for it. Yeah, yeah. Now, now there was, um, that series also alluded to um, a big problem with meth in the town. Um, did, did you find that to be true? Um, I Actually, you know, I wasn't looking to buy meth while I was there, so I oh. didn't know. <laughs> That's kind of a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> you brought your it own. Seems, it seems like your thing. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I spend most of my time with my brain speeding fast enough. Anyway, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, she brought her own. No, but I just, no, I just, I mean, because they, they really kind of alluded to that with, with uh, they mentioned it a lot, how much meth was being sold and bought and, and being made in that town. Um, I wonder well, if that had know, an effect. Well, you know, there's so many, it might, have ha- it might have had an effect on Branson Perry. I don't think it had any kind of an effect on Bobby Joe Stinnett. Mm. I mean, her her killer came from a state away. Yeah, yeah. But there are a big, big number of of towns where there is not a future for a lot of people, and there isn't a way to earn a living without leaving. And I think that's why those little towns oftentimes are the place where meth becomes a problem because they're so desperate to make money. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, this, this Bobby Jo Stinnett, now, the, 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 the case starts really when uh, her mother discovers her um, in her home lying um, dead in a, in a big pool of blood. And, yes. and the child missing, and she calls 911. Um, yes. So up till then, Bobby Jo Stinnett, who was she? Like, what, what kind of life did she have? She was a sweet young country girl. She loved animals. She worked in a pet store. She um, raised uh, uh, carriers and um, bred, bred them and raised them and sold them, and that's how she made money. Uh, she was just a local girl. I mean, she, there was nothing about her 
that was extraordinary, except I do understand she was absolutely excellent at her barrel racing, but that's not a skill that is uh, often esteemed in in big cities. You know, it, it's a country thing. And she uh, was as sweet as sweet can be. You can't find anybody that can say anything negative about her. She was um, a lovely girl who just wanted to have a family and she finally found the right guy and they were starting to make their family. And for that sin, she was murdered. Wow. And so this was close to Christmas too, wasn't it? Like December 16th? Your 16th? Yes. Wow. About how horrible it has to be for, for um, Bobby Joe's mom to, for such a brutal, horrible crime to happen so close to Christmas. And every year as December approaches, probably for the rest of her life, she's going to be haunted by her daughter's death. And and it's going to overshadow Christmas for her. It's it's really a sad thing. Yeah. I mean, she was only 23 when she passed. And, right, and, and, yeah. And, and how it happened is probably one of the most horrific things that I think I've ever read. Oh my gosh, yes. It was it was so brutal. Um, you see, it was a ruse on on Lisa Montgomery's part to make her think she was coming to buy a puppy, and she came into her home and sliced her up the middle, and as she pulled the baby out, Bobby Joe fought back, and she throttled her, and left with that child, drove back to Kansas, and took her around the neighborhood, claiming her to be that this was her new baby. Wow. Wow. Was Montgomery pretending to be pregnant then back home? Yes, she had been pretending to be pregnant. Um, and it, getting pregnant was something that she'd done in a previous marriage when she thought she was losing her husband's interest. And now in this current marriage, I think she was feeling the same thing, but her tubes have been tied. But some reason she put on this fake pregnancy act anyway and her husband who had lost interest in her what was glad for an excuse not to be physically intimate with her and so he 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 was just fine with him that that part of the relationship was over so he didn't question it he just went along with it I've seen the mugshot. Uh, I can probably agree with him on that fact. She did. <laughs> she she does not look like a, a pleasant individual at all. At least in that picture. Um, she. I, th- I think she probably could at times look like a very pleasant individual. I imagine she was all smiles when she was walking around with the other woman's baby, claiming mm. it to be hers. She went to a preacher. She went to the cafe in the downtown area where everybody went. Um, she she thought she pulled off a great big surprise for the world. She didn't think she'd ever get caught. So, no. what what was her story? What's what's Lisa Montgomery's tale? Well, she she had a um, a, a childhood that wasn't. You know, it it wasn't particularly brutal, but it wasn't particularly pleasant either. There's a question of whether or not one of her stepfathers abused her. Um, it, that may have happened, and that may have twisted her. But it seems like she was a very self-absorbed person from the beginning. And... Um, she always wanted to have her way and what she wanted was always most important and she watched the example of her mother who uh, basically 
taught her that if you don't have a man, you are not of value. And so she would do anything to hang on to a man. This was not her first fake pregnancy. Once before, she said she was she was following someone else who was having twins, and she was having twins. But then the the real mother who was had a miscarriage, and so then Lisa had to have a miscarriage too, or else say she was wrong about the twins, which is what she did. She switched over to Bobby Joe's baby then. She's a very messed up person. Yeah, I was um, going to say. Yeah, I, I, you know, yeah, when she, I read about her, she studied on how to um, give a cesarean on a goat. That was part of her practice for what she was going to do. Oh, <laughs> oh, great! I you really, know, yeah. <laughs> when I was reading about her, I thought maybe she was married to the guy that they shot in town, right? Because he was into yeah. raping all yeah. these fourteen-year-old girls, and it sounded terrible. Um, so, but how can I? This is what I don't get. How can you actually go in with the intention of cutting a baby live out of a live person? I don't know. You know, I really thought that this was when I heard about this crime. I thought, my God, this is bizarre, and I didn't think it ever happened before. I never even heard of it. But sure enough, I started doing the research, and although it was a rare crime, it was happened enough times that the FBI issued a special report on it. And what what the, a lot of the thinking is, is that people that wanted a baby and couldn't have one would usually go into the hospital and steal a baby. But then security at hospitals got so tight that they couldn't do that. So some decided to just um, prey on uh, people in their neighborhood who put up the little signs as a boy to girl in their yard and take that baby or offer to donate um, baby supplies to someone and, and, um, and then take that baby. And they, uh, they looked into the odd thing that some people find totally incredible that the man in the woman's life didn't catch on to it. But they said it wasn't because they were stupid. It's because they were disinterested. They had doctors, lawyers, who've been in the, the, the life of these women who took the babies. And when it, it gets too hard to get what you want or impossible to get what you want, there are people who have absolutely no limits they will lie cheat deceive and steal and kill to get what they want uh, you know when you hear about a baby being cut out i think of sharon tate charles manson um it's, it's kind of yeah. the only thing i've i've heard of before so um how did the town deal with this then this was really close to um, the, the shooting uh, of McElroy, right? Well, it wasn't that close. I mean, there were, there were quite a few years in between it, but they were still carrying the stain, and they still had that chip on their shoulder. And, you know, Lisa Montgomery uh, had studied that the crime of stealing a baby from the body. And she decided that what everybody else did wrong was stay in their own hometown and commit the crime. So she went a state away. Now, was she drawn to Skidmore because of McElroy? It's possible she was researching crime. She could have stumbled across that. That could have made it appealing to her. I have no idea. I mean, she's never given a public interview. So, you know, and she didn't testify at her trial. 
and she's just sitting on death row right, waiting to die. So, you know, there's no way to know. Yeah, no way to know. How did she, how did the two meet? They met online. Um, they were both the name, uh, they were both on this chat group about rat terriers. And, um, Lisa Montgomery and her had actually met just like to say hi. No, no, they didn't really know each other at different events for the, the rat terrier enthusiasts. And she, um, created a false identity to communicate with Bobby Joe online. And, um, at first, you know, they were, the police were looking for her under her false name and under the fake town where she said she lived. It was a town nearby in Missouri, but in actuality, she was way down in, in Kansas, uh, west of, uh, Kansas City. I mean, yeah, Kansas City. Wow. wow. So, uh, w- so what she actually uh, said she was going to come buy a dog. Yes. Coming by to look at the puppies. It's it's just so weird, and and I keep going back to what a sweet innocent young woman Bobby Joe was and how in some ways she set herself up to be a victim without realizing it. The mm. uh, National Center for Missing and Exploited Children said that you should never, ever put a picture of yourself online at, when you're pregnant. You should never put up one of those nice little signs in the yard, you know, that says, I got a brand new baby. You should not draw the attention of strangers to yourself because that's where danger is. Wow. Um, Now, the baby survived, correct? Correct. That's, that wasn't true in a lot of these cases, but in this one, yes, the baby survived, and the father um, has been raising the baby. And um, from all I've heard, which is indirectly, she has been, she's doing just fine. Thank goodness. Yes, yes. But, you know, someday she's going to know the story of what happened to her mother, and that's going to be hard for her to take, but hopefully they pick a time where um, she's mature enough to deal with it. Yeah, this she'd be 16 years old now? Just about. Yeah, just about. 15, 16, yeah. Yeah. Wow, wow. How, how did this Lisa Montgomery know uh, the baby would survive? Like, how did she know what timing? Like, eight months and and where she could do this, this, this thing. Um, well, she'd been following what was going on with Bobby Joe for a little while, and um, I don't know if she knew exactly how far along she was, but uh, the baby was due January nineteenth, I believe. So uh, it was eight months, which is extremely a viable baby, and. A lot of people misjudge that when they commit this crime, and and that's why the baby doesn't survive. Um, Others are so traumatized in the actual attack on the mother, they don't survive because they get injured too. But it's, uh, you gotta get, every baby should be checked out by a medical professional. You know, make sure that they're okay. I mean, there isn't any problem that a layperson might not recognize. And childbirth is natural and everybody does it. But 
when it doesn't go right, it can go horribly wrong. And we're lucky that that baby survived. Yeah, I was surprised. And you say, you know, most of them die. Do, do you know how many of these happen per year, or is, is there quite a few? I, no, there's, it, it's not. I, I'm not even sure if it happens every year. And there were, I think, um, about a dozen case studies in the FBI report that went over 15 a 15 year time span. So, I mean, I heard one just recently happened somewhere in the country, and I can't remember where off the top of my head, but um, it, it, it's a rare crime uh, because. There's a lot of reasons. I mean, for one, you have to be capable of violence. For two, you you have to be willing to fake a a pregnancy for a number of months for anybody to find it credible that you just had a child. So it's um, it's it takes a lot of horrible to use this word, but dedication to the lie. Uh, on the part of the perpetrator to even think about pulling it off. And wow. it's, so it doesn't happen too much because it, it takes a lot of effort. So what's what's happened to Mick Montgomery's family now? Um, I'm, I'm, I suppose they are probably had to move and, and, and hide from their town. Well, I don't know. It's like I I don't think that, I mean, at first, everybody was um, thinking that that they were bad people. But soon after that, that faded, and it was clearly pointing the finger at Lisa Montgomery. Malvern is a small town in Kansas, and and her husband there was in a family that was well established in the community. He had support from his church, and I think they just pretty much uh, were were okay. I do not know if they stayed in the same house, but I do know that they stayed in the area. And, and there were a lot of kids in the house, too. I forget how many. Five, I think. So she had that from a previous marriage, or? Um, there were, yes. Yes, there were previous marriage babies, yeah. Wow. This is a crazy story. Um, how does something like this get to you? Does it get to you, or do you, does it affect you when you go down and you're dealing with something like this? This was... My my initial emotional response to it had more to do with my grandmother because it wasn't long after my grandmother had died that um, this happened on the same day, on the anniversary of my grandmother's death. So that started. Then at that time, I had a daughter about the same age as Bobby Joe. So it was like... Um, an emotional roller coaster for a lot of the time working on it and and getting um, shunned by so much in the neighborhood so many in the neighborhood was bizarre and it's when somebody is missing it's it's a funny thing about the general public when somebody is missing and they're trying to find it Everybody wants to run to the media and get media coverage on the missing person. And the more media, the better. And then when the person's found dead, it's like the media scum. You know, there's no gratitude for the fact that they, they, because of what the media did, that person's body was found, and at least they can be laid to rest. You know, I and I don't, yeah. I don't understand that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I yeah, I know what you mean. Um, what, what made the police um, 
look into this sort of situation in 2004. Like, I'm just thinking um, that's the, you know, someone interested in a, buying a dog, you have a dog business. What made them go on the line and sort of go through the emails and stuff and think it could have been someone like her? Well, they had, um, they looked for who that she'd last been in communication with because that's an important person in a case, no matter um, whether you're dead or alive. I mean, it's an important person. It doesn't mean that person has anything to do with it. But um, when they found out it was a false name, that's when they started getting suspicious. And they um, they actually got calls from some other people in that rat terrier community who were talking about the how suspiciously that person was acting and they were uncomfortable with it. And so, um, and they knew her history. They knew who she was. They knew her history of faking pregnancy and sending handmade quilts to this woman who's supposed to have twins and um so they they were very suspicious of Lisa Montgomery and they uh they they suggested her well then they had to use uh the tracking software to find out where she really was and they tracked it back to her home and then they 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 moved in to uh to get the get the child and they everybody the family sitting and watching television. They're watching the news of this uh baby that's missing. And Lisa's sitting there holding the baby. When the police walk in. Oof. And the sad wow. thing is is, you know, um her husband, he, he loved kids. He just, he just loved kids to death. And he was like, he didn't understand what was going on at all. One of the things he asked the police after they took the baby and his wife away, he said, he said, well, when will I get my baby back? Hmm. He didn't so understand at all. I mean, it was just, it was so horribly sad. And, and you know, what little tiny babies are like, it only takes a couple of days to bond with them. You know, and yeah. he, he really, he really was a victim too. Oh, yeah. It would, it would be devastating for him and the family. Um, so, uh, so what's going to happen with her now? You say that she's on death row. She's so on federal actually... death row. So does that mean she'll actually get get uh, killed or or by the government, or is she just going to be there forever? The feds tend to be really slow with their executions, so and it seems like they even slow down even more when it's a woman. So I don't, you know, I don't think um, that it's all that likely. Um, and I imagine she'll just die in prison. Yeah, right now, isn't she the only woman on federal death row? I think she might be, yeah. It's, a, it, there's, it's really odd to end up on federal death row. That's an unusual place. Most of the death row prisoners are in state prisons. I think but it was she because... She the state line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was the, the kidnap aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she, that's crazy. We we sort of have a problem putting a woman to death for something like this, don't we? Or in any case. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and I, and I think it is because society really hasn't totally accepted that a woman is capable of the same level of violence as a man. And yes, it may be rarer in women, but the capability is clearly there. Um, you know, I had even women serial killers. They're, I mean, yes, they're they're not as typical as men, but 
it can happen. And I think we need, we would really, it's odd to say, but I think it might be a sign of improved gender equality if we stop being that way. Yeah. Put her down. Make them equal. Oh, boy. But, yeah, you know, it's like, well, in, in, in the justice system, I, I just, I think sometimes being a woman works against you, but more often it works in your favor. Yeah. And that's like, you know, it's the, it's the other thing that just doesn't work is if you're rich, well, you pretty, you, you can pretty much count on the fact that you're, you're not going to get the death penalty. No matter what yeah. you do. And it, yeah. you know, so there's an unequal justice. And I think we do need to strive to improve on that. Wow. So this is quite the book. I've been listening to it. It's great. Um, are you working on something new? Um, poetry or? <laughs> I am, I'm working and I'm getting very close to the end of a not writing a novel that um, starts out with one of the characters sitting and watching the beautiful falling snow and fantasizing about the number of ways her husband could die before he got home. Oh, so, so yeah, you are working on something much lighter. That sounds uplifting. <laughs> <laughs> good, good Christmas stories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good, good happy stuff. Um, wow. Now, do you, do you have your own website now for people to come see you, or is it just go online and find your book? Yeah, my we- my website is http colon slash slash uh, com. Well, that's pretty easy. You right. don't even need uh, that old fussy www in there. No, nowadays. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll put that up on the website, just like your book. Um, our guest has been the great Diane Fanning, and the book we're talking about is Baby Be Mine, and it's the shocking true story of a woman who murdered a pregnant mother to steal her child. Thanks for being on. My pleasure. Have fun in your house of mystery. <laughs> <laughs>